What's up guys, today we are back talking about shells. Not all gastropods have the coiled shell structure that we talked about in the previous video. Some have lost this spiral structure to form a flatter, more compressed shell. These shells are referred to as limpet or limpet-like shells. We distinguish between limpet and limpet-like because this shell structure has evolved many times throughout the history of gastropods. Scientists have theorized as to the evolutionary pressure that causes this shell shape to form, considering things like water flow, water chemistry, and diet type. But in reality, it appears that no single evolutionary pressure causes this shell shape to form as these shell shapes can be found across the world in all kinds of different ecosystems, including deep sea hydrothermal vents, the shallow inner tidal zone, streams, and even lakes. Like I said, the limpet shell shape has evolved many times, and we're just gonna talk about a few of these groups. The groups we're gonna talk about today are the true limpets, the false limpets, the keyhole limpets, and the slipper snails. And maybe we'll scatter a few other groups in as well. The true limpets are known as the group patellogastropods. They include families like Lotididae. These animals generally have a flattened oval shaped shell with no evidence of coiling. On the inside of these shells, you can find a horseshoe-shaped muscle scar opening on the anterior end. True limpets are an important part of the rocky intertidal community. You can find these snails typically suctioned onto the rocks grazing on algae. False limpets, on the other hand, make up the family Siphonaridae. Their shells will look really similar to true limpets, but they can be distinguished because they actually have a set of lungs that allow them to breathe air above water, which true limpets do not. If you look on the inside of the shell, they'll have a horseshoe-shaped muscle scar similar to true limpets, but the horseshoe muscle scar on false limpets will open on the right, marking the location where the pulmonary furrow was, or where the lungs of the limpet were. If you find one of these shells on the beach, it's probably going to be pretty hard to identify them based on this muscle scar pattern, so I would just compare the shell shape and shell sculpture uh, from species in that area of both groups. Keyhole limpets belong to the family Physarellidae. Keyhole limpets can be easily distinguished from true and false limpets because they'll have a hole or a notch somewhere in the shell. The location of this hole or notch can vary greatly by species, but it's a dead giveaway that you're looking at a keyhole limpet. The hole of a keyhole limpet is used to expel water and waste from the limpet's body. The hole of these limpets will grow as the animal grows. This is done by reabsorbing the shell back into the body. Keyhole limpets also have the horseshoe-shaped muscle scar pattern opening on the anterior or head end of the shell. Let's talk quick about how sculpture patterns will be described in the limpets that we've discussed so far. You may have heard these terms in previous videos, but let's take a look at what those would look like. Radial sculpture patterns would look something like this in these limpets. Here's a real example of a limpet with radial sculpture. Concentric sculpture patterns would look something like this. Here's a real example of a limpet with concentric sculpture. Finally today, let's talk about slipper snails. Slipper snails belong to the genus Crepidula. If you find a slipper snail on the beach, an easy mistake to make would be to think that maybe it's a valve from a bivalve, but in reality, it's a gastropod shell. A dead giveaway that you're looking at a slipper snail is the platform-like structure on the inside of the shell, sometimes called a septum. This septum will separate the internal organs of the snail from its foot and head. It also roughly gives this shell the shape of a slipper, hence the name slipper snail. Most slipper snails are actually suspension feeders. This means that they filter their food out of the water column. Slipper snails are known to attach to shells inhabited by hermit crabs and even the shells of horseshoe crabs. These crabs are notoriously messy eaters. So as they eat their food and extra food scraps kind of fall off, these slipper snails will scoop that up and filter it out of the water. Now slipper snails, or the genus Crepidula, is actually part of the family Calyptraeidae. Calyptraeidae has a couple other snails that are very limpet-like in appearance. These are the cup and saucer snails and the Chinese hat snails. These two are gonna be our bonus shells of the day. Cup and saucer snails are part of the genus Crucibulum. Cup and saucer snails get their name because they look just like that, a cup and saucer. The outer larger portion of the shell will be considered the saucer, while they have a cup-like protrusion extending onto the inside. Chinese hat snails belong to the genus Calyptraea. They look very limpet-like on the outside, but if you look at the underside, they actually have the typical spiral structure of many gastropods. Thank you for watching. If you found this helpful, then like the video and comment down below the coolest limpet or limpet-like shell that you've ever found.